Blunt Cuts is a podcast fueled by creativity, curiosity, and empowerment. We cut through the daily mess of life. This is Unfiltered Honesty. Park your passive at the door. This is Blunt Cuts. Welcome to Blunt Cuts. I'm CJ, and please welcome to the studio Katrine Schroeder, Creative Director and Social Media Director for Drink Love Life. It's a seltzer for your love life. Welcome, lady. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me, CJ. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. It is um, so good to have you. And um, we met via a DM because I was like, I need to know more. I need to know more of the story of um, <laughs> this amazing product and the women behind it. So I'm so excited to have you here today. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourself um, and kind of how things got started. But first and foremost, you, and then we'll kind of get into um, the amazing drink that is love life which um people this is a seltzer bubbly for uh your lady parts um so yes. bubbles in all the right places so <laughs> super excited kind of a um, sexually enhancing um bubbly soda water so yeah let's talk about it okay yeah so uh it's been a bit of a wild ride so Bar, uh, as the beginning of any startup usually is. <laughs> um, I'm a self-employed graphic designer and artist soon to be based in Florence. Uh, right now I'm quarantining on the side of a mountain with my family, so that's quite interesting. <laughs> um, and I have been guiding the branding and voice of love, love life since the beginning. Uh, so basically, if you see or read something related to love life, I most likely created it or had a hand in it. Um, in a way, I almost feel like the personality behind it is a very sassy and naughty extension of myself at this point. <laughs> um, my parents, Carl and Kristen, are actually the founders of Love Life. Um, and it's kind of funny to think how I used to get into all sorts of trouble uh, telling naughty jokes growing yeah, up. Yeah, how do and you create a sexually enhancing beverage with your parents? <laughs> like, that is a whole other thing. Yeah, um, at first, there was definitely, like, um, I don't say, like, a learning curve, but, like, at first, there were a few, like, hurdles that we had to get over. Um, it was just, like, so funny seeing some of the meetings initially, because, um, like, I never would have imagined that this would be my life right now. <laughs> Like if you had told me this like um like seven yeah, years this ago or something. Like a great movie. <laughs> yeah. I do. I do agree. Yeah, especially since like growing up, my dad kind of like skirted the whole birds and the bees conversation. So I'm like, oh, we gonna have it now. <laughs> 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 yeah. So anyways, it's just it's so funny about all that. Now they're like literally paying me to like make these memes and tell these jokes and like have this personality so I'm like my my how have the tides changed <laughs> but it's been actually like really great and I feel like we've all grown a lot from this experience it's been really beautiful uh and we actually come from a long lineage of entrepreneurs that started several generations back after my parents sold their initial business they began doing some soul searching to figure out what to do with their lives when my dad remembered a beverage his former company had carried containing amino acids that had some unintended health benefits to it, if you will. <laughs> Great. Love it. Um, and like thinking back on that, he got really curious and he began researching amino acids more and he realized there's a huge, huge untapped market for them, especially in the sexual health industry. Um, because basically, if you don't have a penis, like, you've been shit out of luck in this area. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, um, no, exactly. Yeah, what's the deal? So that's where Love Life comes in. <laughs> um, Which, yeah, no, I absolutely love it. I mean, I think any product that's willing to just get out there and be super bold and stand up and take space, um, you know, where you should be. And it's exciting. It's exciting to to see. Um, and I love following 
um, all of your your social social channels. So you're doing a great job, and I, I see a lot of similarities between um, kind of our naughty side on our Blunkets Instagram um, <laughs> and love life. So we're kindred spirits in, in that way, in a, you know, in a lot of ways. So I wanted to kind of unpack a little bit um, more about like what what as a woman like how how do you um you know feel this product is is making a change in in the in the right direction you kind of alluded to it a little bit but I'd love to unpack that well I feel the whole thing is kind of like taboo like we walk this weird line I guess where it's like be sexy but also don't be like too sexy and like all these things and so we're just kind of coming in and being like hey <laughs> we're here. <laughs> no, I couldn't say more. I think it's really challenging, um, you know, in, in this space to, um, to speak up and like hold your sexuality. And I, for me, I, I'm a very open person. So that hasn't been like a personal struggle that I've had, but I've, I've sat with so many women. They're like, how can you be so like bold and out there, but also be a mom? Like, oh, you have kids, but you're like showing yourself in a sexual way or you're, you know, advocating for it. And to me, like, there's nothing more um, sexual and um, like amazing than motherhood. Like, I, it's just, <laughs> you've created a human. Like that is a pretty magical thing that came, you know, out of, of love and in sexuality and expression and passion and um yeah that is that is life that's amazing yeah. so um yeah. I love anything that can kind of highlight those <laughs> things in our life and um I think for women especially it's challenging and difficult I know my mom was very modest um I grew up you know she was very modest and I wasn't so I was kind of like wait why do I why do I have to put clothes on right now <laughs> like you know so just and my husband's very modest so it's funny my daughter's a little bit of a mix of us so we'll see um how Ooh. that, how that <laughs> ends, ends up shaping in her life um but just yeah I think that that idea of of women in having the um, just women, it's okay. Like if you need permission, <laughs> not that I'm here to give you permission, but it's okay. Yeah. Like love yourself and express yourself the way you want. And yes, you guys are doing yes. that with the brand and you don't see that a lot in branding. So. Oh my gosh. I'm so, so glad that, you know, we come across that way to you and everything. So <laughs> <laughs> I love your excitement and enthusiasm. So, um, let's talk about it. I tried it. Um, I, I have it. Uh, I have some left, believe it or not. Um, it's amazing. First of all, it, like it's super delicious. Um, I thought that it was kind of like a combo of a little bit of a energy drink, little mm -hmm. taste to it, but um, definitely like really lightly um, flavored, not overpowering. I had it in a cocktail. I think that's allowed. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh, oh my gosh. Okay. So like I need the deets. What did you mix it with? <laughs> so um, I have frozen berries, which I just kind of always have because I'm a smoothie person. So vodka, frozen berries, and the love life. And it was absolutely delicious. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm a big like placebo effect kind of person. So I'm like, I think I feel it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I think I feel it. Um, so I'm totally <laughs> in when I try something because I like, you know, want to be. But after yeah. about like, 45 minutes I definitely felt it and I was like all right and my husband you know jokingly he's like are you ready is it ready is it time it's time and, you know it's like it's the <laughs> kitchen timer or something I don't know it was just a really funny like interaction we're not like the yeah we're not the most spontaneous so it fit well in our life where it's like okay go mow the lawn and in about 40 minutes after you're done showering like we'll be cut you know like I'm just so <laughs> it. oh so my god I love it like I love I'm a it. you know free expression like love you know love sex love you know yeah. <laughs> those moments but it's just okay on a time frame and then I have other things to do so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah I noticed I definitely noticed um like some increased heat like in my body and I'm kind of a cold person in general, like I am tall. So my hands and feet are always cold. Um, yeah. so anyway, yeah, increased blood flow, like all was good. I, you know, I think, um, bedroom will leave the actual act. I don't need to get all in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I mean, I definitely felt, uh, some differences. So I was excited to hear that like, oh my gosh, a bubbly soda can make a difference. But the biggest thing is my feet were warm all night long. I don't know. Apparently, I needed what? some amino acids in my life because wow. my feet stayed warm all night long, which is not, it's not a thing. So wow. um, there you go. I don't know. That was a true miracle in my life. So. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. You had like the peak response of like what we would hope any customer. Apparently. Like, so I'm so, your lab rat. I'm happy to continue to yeah um, partake, but it was great. So I, I mean, I don't know. I loved it. And I love that idea of like taking charge of your pleasure and Hey, if there's a simple little thing like, Oh, okay. This drink, it's natural. There's nothing in it that's going to hurt me. Like I can just add this and like have a little more fun. Like that's great. Yes. Yes. I'm not super exploratory with like, you know, all the other equipment and different things like, yeah, sex toys a little bit, but not in this capacity of like extreme, crazy, um, you know, BDSM things. I just not my culture, not my thing. I can't quite get it, get there, but I love like that this is so easy and such a great entry point. So (laughs) yeah, we're going to take a quick break. Welcome back to Blunt Cuts. Let's keep talking. Can we just dive into the science for for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the not so sexy science behind it is hey science is way sexy by the way (laughs) (laughs) science is always sexy i'm I'm married to like a scientist so you know (laughs) okay so the the super sexy science behind it okay i like this um for listeners who haven't heard heard about this yet is the amino acids in our beverage love life support and optimize your body's natural nitric oxide production, which in turn promotes blood flow to all the right places. Winkity wink wink. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Yeah, this whole yeah. like it was it was yeah, definitely increased blood flow, but hey, it's yeah, crazy, which was a bonus. And so basically, it's just like giving your body uh, tools to optimize itself, and so there's not going to be like any weird side effects or anything. And so like if you feel the effects great, especially, you know, in your case where you had a peak response. And then if you, you know, have some and you don't, it just means that your nitric oxide production is already popping. So it's like, oh, okay, whatever. I just had a fun flirty drink, like whatever. (laughs) No, then, you know, right. Like, I don't know. So for me that that's one of those things that like sometimes I orgasm, sometimes I don't like, that's just like, I don't know. So I think that's what I call sex. And I I don't think that's unusual for most people. And I've been with my partner for, you know, over 20 years. So it's just at the point where you know, whatever. Yeah. We are each yeah. other's someone and sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, you know, and that's it's kind of how it's been. So it's fun. It's fun to try something new um, and, and explore a little bit um, and just, yeah, rebirth a little bit of fun. And I think that that's, that's what um, I love that you're bringing to the world is a little bit more fun. Oh. <laughs> <Sexy> fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, so no, I, and I love bubbly things in general, like bubbly waters, all the, all the brands. I don't really discriminate. Um, I drink them all way too quickly and they leave my refrigerator way too quickly. So Um, I want to talk a little bit with you about lessons you've learned through this process. Um, you know, as, as a woman, as an entrepreneur, as a daughter, um, working with parents in a sexual brand, (laughs) how, you know, what are those learning lessons you, you've picked up along the way? Well, okay. So, um, the biggest lesson or like observation I've had just from like doing the social media on the branding and like being on that side of things. The, the thing that jumped out the most to me is just how much sexuality is censored within our culture. Yeah, um, no, while totally. violence in many ways is glorified and normalized, um, you would think it would be the other way around as you would hope in reality, the people who you love in your life are enjoying and experiencing sex, uh, not violence. Um, so yeah, and it's also been really eye-opening learning just about how much the algorithm serves to reinforce these I- ideologies and the ideologies of the people who created it rather than the people who are using it. Um, and I kind of learned all of this because it was so tricky trying to figure out content that would even reach people. Yeah, so what do you mean by that? Like the algorithms of the social platforms are kind of um, masking the, your ability to put out the, the info you want. Yeah, yeah, like um, uh, sexual content in general is just super, super drowned out on social media, like very intentionally. And um, I had no idea that that was the case until I started diving into this whole thing. And it was like, whoa, yeah, it's crazy. 
Yeah, I, um, I, I did a like hilarious how my life comes full circle. But in the early 2000s, I did an independent research um, study where I lived in Paris. Um, and I was actually working in fashion in the time, but I was also in college. So I did a um, study analyzing Parisian culture versus American culture in beauty, fashion, and entertainment advertising, specifically focused on like sexuality, um, women, um, body, nudity, and then um, the idea of violence. So it's so funny because like absolutely 100%, we will glorify all all around here in the U.S. to our young children, um, you know, video games or different things with, with guns or even showing imagery on on the news. Like it's not it's not uh, um, uncommon to to show um, weapons or different things like that. But rarely, you know, in American culture, do you see bodies? Do you see nipples? Do you mm-hmm. see women in a way that's very natural? Um, and in like a Parisian you know, peanut butter commercial, the reef nipples, you know, like it's just, it's yeah. not, it's not seen as a, as a taboo and American culture definitely has that, that spin of yeah. um, like violence is okay and sex isn't. And um, yeah, I, I, I've always been fascinated, but that whole study, I kind of unpacked what you're exactly saying is that idea of where, and how do those intersections um, work? And why are we censored in the US um, specifically around sexuality and sexual imagery um, and that voice? Because it, it can be a very healthy space. And for a lot of people, it is a very healthy expression and it's so natural. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah, exactly. at, like everyone is experiencing this. I mean, I definitely don't I you know we don't talk that much to our like friends about you know sex or different things um but that that is just such a normal a normal thing and what's when I was like living in Paris everybody's talking about everything I'm like wow this is just so different like those are not the same conversations that like I even have with girlfriends in college like so it's just different living with um you know people from other cultures learning like all of all of those different things so I had a little bit of a frontline perspective on that um yeah, it's different. So do you notice like in Italy, are you marketing the brand there or is it just kind of in the U.S.? Uh, no, at the moment it's just in the U.S. We're okay. working on this market first, but hopefully someday. We'll yeah, no, I just kind of wondered, wondered if you had a, a different perspective, you know, of people there. It's always fascinating. Yeah, well, um, so last fall, actually, I backpacked through Europe for four months by myself. And um, I know we could do a whole crazy. podcast on that. I want to know more. <laughs> I, I know. Um, before I decided to move to Italy, or uh, that's kind of like what led me to moving to Italy. But uh, something that I heard frequently from Europeans once they found out I was American, they were just like, "Oh, like everything's so hypersexualized, like in your culture," and. It was like a really interesting observation to hear. And I've been thinking a lot about that. And I I think it kind of gets back to that whole like sex being kind of taboo or like repressed in um, American society. And so it kind of like comes out sideways almost. Yeah, it's hard. Um, It's hard to look at like that spectrum. I think from the outside, um, you know, and I'm not an outsider. So I, I know from the inside, I see like hey, it's porn. Like if you put a picture up, nudity, it's porn. And it's like, no, like there is like a line. (laughs) Like there's a line of, you know, sex work and, um, you know, work for pay and imagery for pay or video for, you know, like there, yes, that is an industry and a space, but there is a space for expression, um, you know, of loving yourself and your body and your, um, you know, femininity or your sexual expression um, without having to be, you know, for pay or sex work or pornography. Yeah. Like there is well, a space. This kind of gets into like another thing that I've learned through working on this whole thing that I feel like it should be an obvious thing, but it it seriously didn't occur to me until I started working on love life. Um, And that's our bodies aren't like inherently sexual. They're just like sexualized. And so it's like Hmm. a a picture of like a woman's body doesn't have to automatically be sexy or whatever. I, I, I don't know if I'm articulating this very well, but I don't know. It's been something I've been thinking about a lot uh, since starting this job, I guess. So yeah. Yeah. 
it's open it's definitely opened your opened your eyes to to how the world and culture you know looks and I, I think censoring that information um you know there's a lot of censorship right now and i think that we're in the world where we're feeling um that in a lot of different ways so i think we have to continually ask ourselves like is my where do i get my content out and how you know how do i get it out if it's being censored here is that the right place or space how do we build places and spaces so that we see the media we want to you know and i know that's one of our missions here at matriarch digital media is to like be that and be that space and place for for women um to see media that they're they're craving and needing and not seeing right so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I'm so thankful. Thank you for being here. And um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us and uh, teaching us a little bit about the sexy science of uh, bubbles in all the right places. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Thank you so much. For where like can I, um, where oh. can everyone find you? Oh, okay. So here's the thing is we're mainly an e-commerce brand. And so this is actually going to get into the sensors censorship a little bit so we're available on amazon but amazon suppresses like sex related items and so to actually find us on amazon you have to google love life sparkling romance amazon in order to get the page yeah it's wild um girl you got a journey <laughs> i know and then um how did i find so, you I was I really good. <laughs> and then uh we're also available on our parent company's website right now moonlightbeverage.com and then by the end of the month we will launch an independent love life web website and the url for that will be drinklovelife.com and you know worst case scenario you can just go like hop on instagram and find us yeah great way um, to, to do your yeah. instagramming i think that's definitely where i found you so um keep up with the amazing uh work and yeah go women and bubbles in all the right places <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> well uh thank you so much for hanging out with us and yeah let's continue the conversation on instagram you can find us at blunt cuts podcast blunt cuts is a production of matriarch digital media Executive producer, Twilight Ang. Edited by Beth K. Gibbs. Production assistant, Mia Register. You can find more great podcasts from Matriarch Digital Media at matriarchdm.com.